was feeling lonely How I wish I had somebody who could hold me <laughs> Song stuck in my head Hi guys, welcome back to my channel uh, If it's your first time here, my name is Andy How are you? I hope you're having a great day today So today the video is about something that's really close to my heart um, if you uh, have seen any other videos in this channel, you know that I like to talk about language learning, but I also love reading. I love talking about books. Um, I have done a video, uh, like a booktober tag, uh, and ever since I haven't really <laughs> touched on the subject anymore. Um, but I thought that this would be a good way to bring that up again in the channel. So for those who don't know, I am actually Brazilian. I, you know, born and raised, live here. Portuguese is my first language. Uh, English is my second. Um, so, you know, it's really, that's why I said this is like a special video for me. <laughs> it's close to my heart. So today I'm gonna talk about three Brazilian books that I absolutely adore. Um, and I felt like I had to share with you guys, share with the crowd. Maybe you guys don't know these books, maybe they will interest you. All of these books that I'm gonna talk about are translated um, and they're all classics. Uh, of course, there's a lot of content, uh, contemporary books as well, but I decided to bring these three because I just really love them. Therefore, I have more like room to talk about them. You know what I mean? So, like I mentioned in my Booktober tag video, one of the things that I absolutely adore about reading or literature in general is how much you can get from a culture just by reading it without actually having, you know, to move from your house, from your place, from your home. Um, and that's something that I really like to incorporate into language learning as well. Because, uh, you know, language is it's a way of expressing a certain culture, like there, you cannot separate them. So, you know, um, if anyone out there is learning Portuguese or just has an interest in Brazilian culture, just want to know a bit more about, you know, the history even, um, the culture in general, I think these three books that I'm going to talk about today are really um, good for that. So the first book I want to talk about it, it's probably one of my favorites. It's like top favorite books ever. Doesn't matter like from which what which country it is or language or whatever. Um, it's a book that like took my like I don't know like has my whole heart. <laughs> One thing about me is that I love books that are narrated by children. One of my favorite books ever is To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, so it is narrated by a child, and I don't know I just love it. I recently read uh, Ain of Green Cables, Cables? Gables, I always say Cables, I don't know why. Ain of Green Gables for the first time and I loved it, I adore it because you know, the first book at least, she's still like a child. Um, and I just love reading these sort of books. They us they're usually like a bit heartbreaking because there's a the whole like theme of like I don't know, like growing up, growing pains in general, or just having that innocence of like a child, kind of like, you know, when you, we grow up, we kind of lose that. But it's like, I don't know, it's 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 a it's a theme that I really like to read. That it's very like, I don't know, it touches my heart. It's very it's it's very touching, you know. So yeah, I just love books like that. And this first book that I'm gonna talk about fits perfectly into that, and that is the book called My Sweet Orange Tree. Uh, in Portuguese, that's called Meu Pé de Laranja Lima. It's a classic. Um, it's usually deemed as like a, oh my gosh, what do you call? Like for, not for children per se, I think it's middle grade, right? That's how you say it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the book with trying to not give, you know, spoilers or anything. So it just shows like his really difficult childhood and upbringing in this really harsh reality of like poverty, 
and violence too. Uh, while having this like incredible imagination, he loves to like uh, play like pranks on people <laughs> sometimes a bit too much. Um, yeah, and he lives in this environment that is not really very good for a child, but it's the reality. Like he has lots of uh, brothers and sisters. His dad just lost his job. They're really poor. Uh, he kind of has to like figure it out how to entertain himself, you know, <laughs> and we know when children do that, like they can get, you know, a bit wild. Um, one of the things that I, I see that shows a lot in the story that he's, is that he's very lonely as a kid. He doesn't really have that warmth, you know, that warm family that really like bond with his, his parents or siblings because everybody's just trying to get by. And everybody's just like stressed out about money. Like I said, they're really poor and whatnot. The only person that he has more of a connection is one of his sisters. And they have like a, a really beautiful like relationship. So yeah, um, and he has this wild imagination. So much so that he befriends a literal orange tree that's planted on his backyard. That's kind of where the name comes from. Of course, there's a lot of symbolism in there. I'm not going to get into it because I don't want to spoil the story. If I had to describe this, I would say that it's beautifully set and one of my favorite books I've ever read, like I said before. So yeah, hope you guys check it out. Okay, so the second book that I want to talk about today is called Barren Lives in English. In Portuguese, the OG name is uh, Vida Secas. Okay, so this is a classic classic. Okay, guys, this is one of those books that like you have to read uh, in school. You can escape from it. Um, I say that, but I actually did kind of escape from it because I never read it in school, I don't think. I only read it in college. But yeah, it's like one of those that's like, yeah, I know that one. You At least you heard of it. So I actually have a copy of it here, a physical copy. Uh, as you can see, it's like, a, it's a pretty short book. It's not very big. Um, and yeah, in my edition, of course, this is in Portuguese. Uh, this right here, guys, this character right here, an icon. Honestly, she's an icon. <laughs> if you ever pick up this book, whatever, whoever is watching, you will know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, this is a story of like this poor family trying to run away from the drought that like hits their home. Um, we really follow their like hardships uh throughout this journey while well, they really try to j just survive honestly um and you know this is actually a huge problem here in brazil to this day uh especially in the northeast region like this is a very like it's very real it, it, it's really real this this whole like journey that they go through i don't even know how many families brazilian families had to actually go through that um yeah so it's it's simple, like the writing of the, the author, it's really simple, but really realistic and full of heart. Like, okay, so it's getting a bit dark now. So, you know, perfect for the last book. This last book that I want to talk to you guys about is actually a play. It's written as a play. The other two are novels. And this one is called A Dog's Will. This is the English name. In Portuguese, it's actually called O Alto da Compadecida. And believe me when I say, guys, this is a, like, stamp, okay? And not only in literature, but in just, like, pop culture in general here in Brazil. Because there is, uh, there was an adaptation, um, a movie adaptation of this, this story. And it's, like, iconic, okay? I don't make the rules. It's iconic. Um, like I said, this is written as a play. Uh, and it is set, again, in the Northeast region of Brazil, not in the modern setting at all. It's like, you know, old times. Um, and in this story, we follow these two friends and they're like really funny, just like shenanigans, escapades. Uh, they're kind of like morally gray characters, you know, they're not like the heroes, but they're not like evil either. They just kind of like, you know, they like to, <laughs> how, do I how do I say this? 
I don't know. They they they, they play people sometimes, you know. Uh, and they ha it it's funny to to see how they can escape from their like, you know, shenanigans that they get into. It's one of those cases where like you just root for them because they're so charismatic. Also, you know, they they're really poor. They come from a very like harsh again, you know, reality. Um, so they're just kind of trying to get by and survive. But it's it's a really funny, different from the the next oh the next the last uh, book that I talked about. This is more of a funny. It's very funny and lighthearted, but there's also a lot. It also touches on a lot of really important issues and and themes here. Um, yeah, and like I said, this became a movie that is like so so loved here in Brazil. It's like a stamp in pop culture. Like up to I think the movie came out in like. 2000 or 2001 and till this day like we're referencing it it's just iconic you know it's a stamp really uh if i had to like describe it it would be hilarious heartfelt and culturally important because it's culturally speaking this it's very rich it's like pot of gold so yeah i definitely encourage you guys to read it as well Okay guys, that was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I really wanna do more videos like this. Maybe like my favorite books, my favorite French books, my favorite Swedish books, you know, things like that. Cause like I said, that's something that I really like doing it. Um, I need to read more like French books, Swedish books don't even get me started on that. It's so hard to get my hands on, on them. Um, but yeah, uh, and Brazilian books too. Um, you know, like, I'm Brazilian, born and raised, like I said, but still there's a lot of Brazilian literature that I don't know and I want to, you know? Because, um, you know, like, when we're in school, we have all those books that we have to read, but I feel like we don't have the maturity to really appreciate them yet, and that's totally okay. It's like, you know, it's life. Uh, but now I would love to get into them. Uh, there are so many more books and um, writers that are so, like, important for Brazilian uh, literature, like I said, not only classics, but also like newer ones, like contemporary. So yeah, I would love to turn this into like a, like a series here in the, in the channel. So yeah, thank you so much for watching if you stay to the end. If you like to, you know, follow me, uh, my Instagram will be there on the screen somewhere. Uh, and like comment down below too, like your suggestions for videos or like if you have, have you ever read or heard about any of these, these books um let me know uh so yeah thank you so much and i'll see you on the next one Bye.